A video showing several PLA recruits crying on a bus as they were allegedly being transferred to Ladakh border to face the Indian Army has gone viral. The footage was originally posted on the WeChat page of Fuyang City Weekly on September 15th, but it was soon deleted. The original post shows 10 fresh recruits from Fuyang City's Yingzhou district in China's Anhui province crying as they sing the words to the PLA song, Green Flowers in the Army. The Chinese Weibo account then claimed that the 10 recruits were crying because they just left their parents and were heading to their barracks, not the Sino-Indian border. But the quick removal of the video and subsequent censorship related to this topic indicated that the footage was indeed most likely genuine. The footage actually shows a different side of PLA, which is portrayed as an intimidating force by Chinese keyboard warriors and the Chinese Communist Party. This clip has got a lot of focus as India and China are currently engaged in a bitter dispute over the line of actual control, or LAC, where they have a difference in perception of its actual alignment at nearly 14 different points. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes why China's People's Liberation Army soldiers are crying on the way to the Indochina border. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by War Thunder, the most comprehensive military vehicle online game for PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One, in which you can go to battle on more than 1,200 playable aircraft, tanks, helicopters, and ships from the 1930s to the 1990s. The game has an amazing attention to detail and focuses on a realistic combat experience, which is why knowing your vehicles and skill really makes a difference. It's easy to get into and all you need to play is nothing more but your mouse and keyboard or controller. Immerse yourself in cross-platform combat with more than 20 million other military vehicle enthusiasts from all over the world. Download and play War Thunder for free using the link in the description below and also get a free bonus tank, aircraft or ship and three days of premium account. Almost 30% of soldiers in the People's Liberation Army PLA, comprises of conscripted manpower, who are forced to serve in the military for two years and then retired. Article 55 of the Constitution of the People's Republic of China prescribes conscription by stating, It is a sacred duty of every citizen of the People's Republic of China to defend his or her motherland and resist invasion. It's an honored obligation of the citizens of the People's Republic of China to perform military service and to join the militia forces. People who are proved to have avoided the draft are liable for punishment, and Beijing authorities criticize those youths who do not want to join the army. Most youth are not motivated and don't associate joining PLA with pride. A soldier's passion to sacrifice himself for the nation is clearly missing in the People's Liberation Army. The heart is not with the body. This scheme ensures excellent headcount. PLA is the largest in the world, but has a major loophole. They hardly have rigorous military training and in combat they get exposed. This could be seen in the Galwan Valley Clash when about 100 Indian Army troops were able to take a heavy toll even when they were outnumbered by 300 to 350 PLA soldiers. PLA's last experience in battle was in 1979 when it suffered a loss to Vietnam. PLA soldiers have been wielding guns in front of civilian populations. This is very different from real battle when they'll face battle-hardened soldiers pointing guns at them. The soldiers are hardly a match for the professional Indian Army. Indian Army has been dealing with Pakistan-sponsored terror operatives, most of who are heavily armed for decades. It's been engaged in numerous conflicts over the years against the Pakistani Army. This is also true of the commander who will have to make crucial tactical decisions in the fog of war. Viewers may note that the actual combat experience can't be replaced by paper theories. 
On top of this, it's to be noted that PLA commanders spend almost 40% of their time in political training. India also possesses the largest mountain force in the world, and these troops are used to the harsh climatic conditions in regions like Ladakh, where temperature can move well below 0 degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. In general, the army of a nation is numerically much superior to other branches like the Air Force and Navy. History shows that a military coup is generally conducted by the army. After Xi Jinping took over power in 2012, he's emerged as the most powerful leader after Mao Zedong. He has time and again emphasized that PLA must obey the directives of the Communist Party of China CPC. This indicates that things are not fine. Xi Jinping has been very conscious that PLA could overthrow him if it becomes too powerful. The reason for this fear is the simmering discontent that's running in the hearts of more than 55 million veterans of PLA who've been treated even more poorly than the current ones and almost have to beg for their due in front of CPC's regional officials. To counter this, Xi Jinping has purged many experienced PLA personnel. He's also enforced a system where there's a constant churn within PLA. For example, a tank commander may be shifted to the infantry division after a while. This tactic hinders the development of expertise and will be very counterproductive in case a real battle ensues. On June 15, during the Gawan Valley Clash, both India and China have suffered significant casualties. This is actually the biggest ever military confrontation between the two armies in over five decades. The Indian Army stated that 20 Army personnel, including Commanding Officer Colonel Santosh Babu, lost their lives. The bodies of Indian soldiers were sent to their hometown and they were laid to rest with full state honor. The domestic population were apprised of the Indian soldiers' bravery and sacrifice by none other than Prime Minister Modi. On the other hand, China didn't disclose its numbers. Indian radio intercepts indicate that China lost 43 of its men. U.S. officials quoting intelligence sources said that the Chinese army suffered 35 casualties and stated that China didn't disclose its numbers as it's come as a major embarrassment for the communist regime. For the CCP, it was seen as a loss of face and no formal recognition was conferred for the ultimate sacrifice. Viewers may note that the PLA is a rare military in the world that obeys not the government but the command of the CCP since the days of Mao. Deep down, a PLA soldier knows he's just cannon fodder for the Communist Party. Chinese leader Deng Xiaoping introduced the one-child policy in 1979 to curb China's rapidly growing population. PLA soldiers are products of one-child families and are often referred to as little emperors and mama's boys. According to a professor at the People's Liberation Army National Defense University, as much as 70% of the Chinese military is made up of men and women who are the only children in their family. The Study Times is an ideology-focused government publication has warned, soldiers from the one-child generations are wimps who have absolutely no fighting spirit. Studies indicate that raising Chinese children without siblings has many detrimental effects. They are too pampered, pessimistic, and risk-averse and hence are especially unsuitable to become soldiers. This has a very complex implication. Will a PLA soldier be able to carry out a dangerous mission when the commander demands it? History will tell us that one of the important factors behind the success of the D-Day landings in World War II was the immense valor of the Allied forces who braved great odds. 
PLA soldier is likely to be found wanting in these situations. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.